The goal of Project Voodoo Banshee is to create a lightweight and powerful trail machine. With a tight wheelbase and classic peaky two-stroke power, this thing should be super fun for the trails. Banshees are not known for their handling abilities, so this could be a challenge. So far, we've gone over the color scheme and build plan, products that we've ordered for the build, we built custom heel guards and nerf bars for it, tore down the engine and inspected the internals, did a cleanup port on our cylinders and cleaned up our cruddy cases and gave them a port match to match the cylinders perfectly. We continue to get new parts and weigh them against the takeoffs. So far, we've managed to drop 12 pounds. However, there was one new part that came in that was in question, and that's the plastics. In this video, we'll be putting them to the axe and testing fitment, installing cylinder studs and showing the results of the port matching, going over and explaining lockup clutches and the clutch setup that I plan to run, modifying a custom foot brake, and going over some of the most important parts of this build that are going to help with fatigue on the trails, including an in-depth description of the Ermosi 720 SBC bar clamps. And yes, there will be more new trick parts and weighing them against takeoffs, including one part that could end my weight savings career. Let's get into it. Not good. Not good, man. These may be the worst fitting plastics that I've ever seen in my entire life. <laughs> I'm kind of serious though, this is, this is pretty bad. So in the last video, I bought a set of plastics and they looked great on the bench. They really did. And they, they still, I mean, they look very nice, but fitment is the issue. So these are eBay brand, Amazon brand. I think they're all like coming from the same factory. And from this distance, they look good. They look great. But when you get closer, so I put these on, I had to stretch them really to get these to fit on. You can see the holes are elongated and they're all the way out at the edge and they just barely fit back here to the tank. Like I said, I kind of had to like stretch it and they just barely make it. So they're on there, but these holes don't line up. They're not even close to those fender uh, mounting points. And then under here, check this out. This has got to be maybe like five, six inches apart. And to pull these down, let me see if I can back up here. I'm really, I'm pushing pretty hard on this thing. Like I'm afraid it's going to get stress marks or maybe even crack if I pull hard enough. We're still a good two inches away. So I probably can pull that together and get it to stay, but you're putting mad stress on this. So like maybe with a heat gun, you could get these things to, to fit, but it's going to, it's going to require quite a bit of work. And then I don't know if they'll ever really truly be right. Then up on the tank, these, this radiator guard, you can get it to stay for like 0.5 seconds and then it wants to pop out of place. They don't have little catches in here to like on the OEM one, they have a, a little, um, it's like a stay, like a hook that goes in here. This aftermarket one, there's nothing there. So it just doesn't want to stay no matter how many times you try to, you know, massage it into place. Again, that would, I guess that would have to be fixed with a heat gun, probably could make it work. These are okay, I guess. I mean, we're mounting them into the aftermarket plastics. So if you had OEM plastics, I don't know that they would pair up to them. But I mean, out of all the pieces, I guess those would be the best ones. And then moving on to the back, I have these mounted right here. Stretch, getting them to fit there. And then in the back on the Banshee, there's these two little like post things or stays. And if you can see the two holes in the frame, they're supposed to line up into there. Well, they don't and they can't even be stretched to fit. I think the only way to get them to fit would be, I'd have to stretch these holes out a little further so that the plastics could go back a little bit and they could pop into those holes. I guess these have to be drilled out, which that's not really a big deal. Um, I'm not gonna touch anything yet though, because these are going back, man. I'm at least gonna try to get a refund. I don't even know, sometimes with big items, I don't know, we might end up getting to keep these things because they don't even wanna deal with the hassle of, shipping back a giant item. Regardless though, I really don't want to use these, not on this build anyways. I mean, it's possible, like I said, we might be able to heat them up and work them and get them to fit okay. But dude, this is the Voodoo Banshee, man. We want these to be right. So I have a whole plan. I already ordered a new set of OEM plastics. So the reason I didn't want to get OEM is because of these, the warning labels. So like these, you can see there's a small indentation, which isn't too bad. You can see it in the back too. I wish they just I don't understand why they have to put that there. Like, why can't they just put a sticker on there so you can remove the sticker and you could never even tell it was there? That was the main reason that I bought these. It really wasn't for price. So a lot of like the eBay, Amazon, Chinese stuff, I guess you could call it knockoff stuff. The, the reason that I would ever recommend it is because of the price. It's a fraction of, you know, buying Meyer or OEM in most cases. And if they're, if they're decent, it's worth it. Even in this case, if these were like, let's say 400 bucks for the full set, I could justify it if, if we can make them fit. If, if, if you can take a heat gun and make these look good, 
I would say 400 bucks is a good price for them for the full set, tank guard and all. And the reason being, you can hop on Rocky Mountain ATV right now and get a full set of OEM fenders for 650 bucks shipped to your door. So I have a brand new set coming. So we'll be able to compare those side by side to this and the Meyer down there. And I even have a front set of UFO plastic. So I'm gonna make a video on plastics comparing all three. It's never my intent to tear down a company. Sometimes there's just a screw up. Like it's, there's still a possibility that this is just a bad set of plastics. They sent me a warped set. The point is I'm not looking to tear down this company. You know, the ATV industry is small as it is and aftermarket companies, that's a come up, man. We want that. We, we want as many companies out there making as many parts as we possibly can. So, but in this case, man, this is just no good. And the fact that I, I messaged this company two days ago. They've had a full two days, business days, to respond, and they still haven't responded. Um, so that's not looking too good for them. So what I did is I filed a return with eBay, and if I don't hear back from the company, they're going to automatically refund me. So I'm safe, uh, but for the company, the customer service isn't looking like it's really there. I just, I don't know, we'll see. I probably should have been more clear and said, like, wait until we at least try the fitment. So we'll see what happens. Let me know in the comment section below if you've bought eBay plastics what your experience is with them, if they fit, if they didn't fit. I put a post up on Instagram and it looks like a lot of people have trouble with these plastics. But what's crazy to me is there are so many vendors selling these things. They must sell tons of them. Are people like not complaining about it or are they just selling them and not responding to people and they're getting away with it? Like, I don't know. But that's the whole point of what I do. Like, I like to uncover stuff like that. We'll leave it at that for the plastics. They'll uh, to be continued. And now moving on to the Nerf bars. I've done a couple things in the meantime. If you guys remember when we fabbed these things up, I chopped this area off of the Nerf bars and it was just kind of floating. So I have a, an end cap welded on there now. And I, I put a threaded um, rivet nut in there. And then I have, you can see it's bolted now. And I welded this little boxed in thing. Welded it all the way around. It's got my, my typical Mike Sabo, ugly but strong welds. And now that this is one piece, that is super strong. Like I'm really confident in these now that if somebody was to come in and crash into me or if I slide sideways and smack into a tree, I really don't think that's going to break. I think that's a really solid unit. Chances are this will get packed with mud. Uh, but again, guys, this is the Gen 1. This is the prototype. So when we do the Gen 2, which will probably never happen, we can, we can fix all of those things. I also did some case work. If you remember in the last video, uh, when I ported these things, there were empty cavities back here. The, the Alpha Cub cylinders are actually, the ports are so big that they couldn't work with stock. So I had these welded. I surfaced it, made it nice and flat. And you can see now we have perfect port matching both sides. And I finished up our cylinders also. Both sides have a nice cleanup port. These are looking really good. What I'm gonna do is throw those cylinders on here because we didn't really get to, I didn't get to really show you the difference. So let me do that now and I'll show you what these things look like with the transfers hooked up and the, uh, the nice smooth transition we have now. All right, so let's stud this cylinder up. Got some OEM cylinder dowels in here. This is something that I've kind of gotten in the habit of now that I'm you know, doing this more frequently. I used to reuse dowels and sometimes I will if like I literally, I either, A, I can't wait for the new dowels, like if I'm gonna rush or they're unavailable or something. But usually, even if it's a weird engine, you can get, dowels are kind of universal. You can just measure them and get a universal dowel that's gonna fit just fine. But it's just nice to get new dowels. You can clean them up with a, you know, polishing and buffing wheel and stuff and get like, a, a, you know, marks and stuff out of them. But that can sometimes get these out of spec. And then when you put them where they're supposed to go, they wiggle a little bit. These are super solid. They fit perfectly and that's what you want. The whole idea is these are alignment dowels so that your cylinder isn't, you know, even just slightly tweaked. All that stuff is really important with an engine. Plus they're super cheap. They're usually like a dollar or two, you know, a piece and that comes right from the manufacturer. So you know the stuff is gonna fit. So we'll take a little bit of our Permatex anti-seize and we're gonna anti-seize all this stuff. If the person who's getting the engine is a real doucher, you might not wanna do this because then when they have to tear the engine down, it's gonna be a super pain in the ass. But as a rule, I like to anti-seize all of this stuff because it just makes life easier when it comes time to rebuild. So now we're gonna put these studs in. These are from BP Racing ATV. What's cool about these is they have, I don't know if you guys can see that, there's an Allen head on top. So you don't have to use the My Nuts trick to get them in there. You can use an Allen head and you'll be good to go. So we'll anti-seize these up as well. You don't need much, but it's just a good habit to get into. Oh, these longer ones go in the front. Shorter ones go on the outer four corners. 
And then these real tall studs, these go in the back. Now we can come in with our T-handle. Oh, shit. Now we can come in with our T-handle and tighten these things up. So much easier than using my nuts. These don't need to be tight. I'm just snugging these down. All right, now in a perfect world, this will slide on with no resistance at all. Oh my God. Well, that's actually quite surprising. <laughs> I tried putting these on with the old studs and they, were, they weren't quite straight. We'll just leave it at that. And the cylinders, you would have had to like pound them on with a mallet in order to get them on and then getting them off would be a freaking nightmare. That just slid right on there though. And wow, I think we're actually, we're nice and flush. It went right over the dowels and everything. And now I've got these little 12 points. These are really cool. One, they're really small. Like the profile is really small. So they're very, very light, which is perfect for this project. And I did get titanium for the same purpose, but I'm gonna weigh these because of the profile being so small on these. These may actually be lighter than the titanium nuts that I got. And I'm just gonna throw one on each corner opposite each other just so that we can have this thing held in place. The other thing that's nice about these is that because they're so, the profile is so small, you use a 10 millimeter wrench as opposed to a 12. And if you've ever worked on a Banshee, especially like, these are the outside ones, but the ones on the inside, they're really difficult to get a wrench in there and it, it can be kind of cumbersome and annoying. But this one, it, it's still not easy, but it allows you to, you know, kind of free up a little bit of space by only using a 10 millimeter as opposed to a 12 millimeter wrench. So they are pretty nice. And I will have these linked in the description below. They come with the stud kit. I'm gonna freehand it here for a second, just to kind of give you guys the perspective because it can be kind of confusing with these super close-ups to see what you're looking at. Here is our transfer port, and this is the cylinder. You can see the sleeve right here and right here. So the piston would go up and down here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zoom in, because I really want you guys to see this. So this is the case that we did the port matching on. And this is the cylinder. Look at that transition, it doesn't even skip. Nice and smooth. I wish you guys could actually, to appreciate this, you really gotta feel it. But that's nice and smooth. So our crankcase gases, let me back out just a little bit. Our crankcase gases will be down here and those transfers will allow our gases to smoothly go up and then on top of the piston and we'll get nice good fuel flow and hopefully some better performance. While we're at it, I'm gonna go ahead and put our lower case studs in, just so that when the time comes to assemble, we'll be done. Same thing with these, these are from BP Racing. And we'll put a little bit of anti-seize on these things. These are all the same size, with the exception of these two outside studs. They're a little bit longer. And for whatever reason, those ones don't have the Allen key. Not sure why that is, so for those, we'll have to use the My Nuts trick. Game day decision, I just decided that I'm not gonna put these studs in because it makes it really difficult to put gasket material around all of these little studs, especially in here in the middle. And I had a leak there last time because it's so difficult to apply there. So granted on the other side, it's easy to put it on, but I like to get it on both, both case surfaces. And these studs only take like two minutes to put in. So I'm gonna pop them out. I can put the case sealer on there and then put them in place. Work smarter, not harder. Now we're at a slight impasse here as far as the engine goes. I've got most of my parts laid out. You guys have seen this already. I don't wanna get started until we have everything. And check out this Mod Quad head, by the way. Mod Quad sent this to me. Thing is really, really nice. It's gonna match this build with a lot of, you know, flat black incorporated. I think that's gonna look really nice. The Chariot one was sweet too, but that was just a clean billet look. I think that's gonna look a little bit better. And it actually, I believe this has a little bit more volume for fluid, so it should do a little bit better of a job for cooling, which is sweet. They're about the same weight. <laughs> that one is, it's, it's slightly heavier. But there's a, the, here's where the impasse is. So in the last video, we talked about this cover that BP Racing sent me. Now this thing is really sweet. I like it because it's flat black. It's just, it's, just, it's a cool look. And also the, the Lexan glass window that looks into the engine is actually bigger than on the direct drive one. So if you look at them side by side, I don't know if you guys will be able to see, but this is a bigger window. I think it's I think it's just neat to be able to look into the engine and see the components turning and stuff. It's just, um, if you haven't seen it before, it's just sweet. Even if it's not functional, it's a really cool thing to have, especially on a Banshee. So that's a really nice cover. And 
I'm not sure I can run it though, and here's why. So here is a lockup clutch. This is the direct drive style. There's two different styles of lockups, at least that I'm aware of. You've got these direct drive setups or a traditional setup. These bolt right on top of your pressure plate and there's these fingers and with centrifugal force, as RPMs build up, these fingers wanna swing out and there's these kind of cam portions on the outside and they'll press against your pressure plate. And the faster you go and the more RPMs you build, the harder those press against the pressure plate and that's what makes it a lockup clutch. It gives you a really good clutch grab and the good, what the pros of this are that it, you have a smoother feel. So I had a very, very smooth clutch feel the way that I had this set up on the Banshee and that's why I wanna use this again. I don't necessarily think that we need the force, not for this build. I, I'd say at a maximum, we're, we'll be pushing 80 horsepower. When this is all said and done and we do a super crazy port job on it, I would say we'll be in the 75 to 80 horsepower range, which for a Banshee, that's really not that crazy. And you can get away with a regular clutch and not using a lockup. Although, you know, we're teetering in that area. They have clutch systems that are a 19 and a 25 plate setup that are made to hold that pressure, but they're super expensive. It's like a thousand bucks for those things. I would like to run those sometime. We'll see. So another pro of running a lockup, even if you don't necessarily need the, the force of the lockup, is that you can continue to run light clutch springs. So you can have a nice, easy clutch pull, but still have the very strong clamping pressure of a super heavy duty clutch. So we don't need to run those heavy duty springs. This is gonna be a trail machine. I'd like to have that light clutch pull and not have to worry about my clutch slipping. So that's why I wanna use this lockup clutch system. And there's a third thing that you get with it, and that's that when you run a lockup, your clutch pack will last typically two to three times longer because there's so much less stress being put on your clutch fibers. Now, the only thing that sucks is the clutch cover from BP is made to run either with the slingshot style lockup, which I don't have one here to show you, but that's a much more compact system. Those can fit under this cover. In fact, you can actually fit a slingshot under your stock cover in most cases. So those are great too, but they're made more for drag racing. And from what I understand, I have ridden a slingshot, but only, only once, and it was on the drag strip. So, you know, I was going balls out. I wasn't really like doing leisurely shifting in the woods or anything. But from what I understand, they're not quite as smooth feeling. So they're more for somebody who's putting down max horsepower. And they're doing a lot of drag racing. I really want this thing to have a nice smooth clutch feel. The whole idea of this build is to have a super fun trail machine that's got mad power, but I don't want it to beat you up. And having a really stiff clutch pull that, I would consider that beating you up. When your hand's getting tired from shifting all the time, that's something that I'm trying to avoid. So because I wanna run this clutch, unfortunately, we can't use that cover. So I'm thinking that we'll use that cover on a future build and we're gonna to have to use the direct drive, which this is a great cover, man. I, I have no complaints about this thing. So the impasse is that I have to send this thing out and I wanna get it powder coated to look just like this cover. We'll get this in flat black. And then I'm not sure if I'm gonna make this a different color or what, but polish just isn't, it's just not the wave for this build. I'd like it to be a neutral color. Maybe we'll make it like a gunmetal color or maybe I'll just make that flat black too. And I've also ordered another Lex and glass cover. I have one in a smoke color and a lime green. I'm gonna see which one that I like better, but that should look super trick. You can see the profile if you come down low, how this one is a little bit taller. And that's what gives the, there's, you need a lot of space for these arms to swing out. Cause this is sitting on top of your clutch pack. And if we went over to the BP one, it would hit the Lexan glass, which it, it just wouldn't work. So I'll be swinging by Bonehead Performance to drop off that clutch cover. And I'll see if they can get, do a rush order on that because we can't assemble the motor until that thing's entirely done. I mean, we could assemble it, but I want it to look the way that it's gonna look whether it's in the quad. So I wanna get that thing powder coated. Now, speaking of the goals of this project and how I don't want it to be a quad to beat you up, one of the most important things to me is my controls, ergonomics, and just the overall feel of a machine. And with that, I would say the most important thing is your handlebars, your grips, your levers, having a stabilizer, and things like that. So I've got everything laid out here just about, with the exception of my steering stabilizer. That hasn't shown up yet, but this is pretty much all of my control stuff. I've got brakes included too. Check out these lime green lines and I will be running Gen 1 YFZ dual piston calipers in the front. These are a direct swap for the Yamaha Banshee. They literally will bolt right up. I already measured it on my spindles. Really excited about these. I'll give you guys a closer look in a moment. All right, I figured we would start off with something that's pretty cool. These are Streamline 
levers. I've never run Streamline before, mainly because they're expensive, but so are ASVs. And when you have nice levers, it really makes all the difference. So these do come with a lifetime warranty. Oh man, you've got to feel it to believe it. These are really nice. One of the things that must use blue Loctite on pivot bolt. All right, I will do that. Um, anyways, this is, this is huge, man. This guard is so big. I don't know if that would like hinder the performance. Hmm. I don't know. We'll have to, we'll have to see. I mean, I'm sure they would cut that down if it was excessively large. I get, yeah, yeah. I mean, I can't, no judgment on that one just yet. <laughs> we'll have to actually run it and see what it's like. Give you guys a closer look at these things. Got a nice quick adjustment up here. Billet aluminum. And it's a breakaway style. I did like that these have like a textured finish. So I think that'll help out a little bit with grip. It'll be interesting to see what these feel like. I mean, I would say this is very comparable to an ASV overall. And then here's the brake lever. These are actually for a YFZ450R. And that's because I'm gonna be using a YFZ450R master cylinder. So I wanted to make sure that this would fit up perfectly. Nice piece. All right, now moving into the brakes, we've got some YFZ450 front brake calipers. These are for the first gen, not the YFZ450R, like the ones that are out now. But this should be a nice upgrade over the single pistons, the stock ones. Now, the only thing is, this probably will add a little bit of weight just because it's a bigger unit. And I mean, it is, it's, it's, it's a hefty unit, but you know what, man? This is one thing that, you know, I don't want to cheap out on weight-wise because stopping power, it's pretty important. So these come with new pads. We'll try them out. If they suck, we'll just replace them with EDCs or something. But um, these reproduction ones, the, the whole calipers, they're very inexpensive. You know, YFZ is a very broadly produced quad. So they're gonna make a lot of this stuff. And as a result, you're gonna be able to get pretty cheap aftermarket stuff. These were $45 shipped for the pair. Very, very affordable. I've used reproduction calipers before. In fact, the rear brake caliper on the Banshee is a reproduction. It came with the quad. Um, I rebuilt it and I've been using it ever since and it's actually really good. However, all of the bushings and stuff and rubbers were worn out in it. So I just went ahead and got a new one because realistically for the rebuild purchase, it's almost cheaper to just buy these whole calipers. So I'll take off this parking brake thing and we'll put the parking brake block off back on there. But these come loaded with new pads and new rubbers and everything. So saving time and we don't have to get it refinished or clean it up or anything. To me, it just made sense to replace the whole unit. Now to go along with those brakes, I got some new stainless steel braided lines. These are a lime green color. It should go with the build really nicely. And they're universal lines. So you can order brake lines by length and it's a lot cheaper that way. So what I did is I just measured my takeoff lines and I ordered these and it was, I mean, you could go with something like Streamline or a Galfer line, but you're gonna pay the price, man. And to my knowledge, these are just as good as those and it's just a fraction of the cost. So all you have to do is measure them and make sure that you get the right size. I will have the link in the description where these came from. And of course, what would new brakes be without some sweet ass rotors? These are really nice. Trick rotors just make anything with a motor look better. Cars, motorcycles, quads, they're just sweet. Oh yeah. I don't know that we'll have any weight savings with these, but they are slotted. These are gonna look sweet on those LSR hubs and I'm gonna get some titanium hardware for them too. And there is the rear. Freaking sweet. Pick these up from RockyMountainATV.com. I will have these linked as well. And to go with the brake, We've got a brake pedal, because stopping is cool. No, it's not. Now, these are supposed to be made of 6061 T6 aluminum. And the best part is, it's 100% brand new, never mounted. You know, in this package, I thought that maybe it was used and mounted before. It's a sweet looking thing though, JFG Racing. I think this is one of those kind of like Chinese made in one factory and sold to a million vendors kind of parts. But I have a JFG one. I think it's on the YZ125, the Grape Ape. And I thought the quality of that one was pretty good too. And so check this out. You have three mounting points so you can bring it forward and backward. And it's for a 305 Banshee. It's not really made for the 350, but we're going to make this one work. Oh, check that out. So if you hit like a stump or something, something comes up and hits this. It's almost like the shifter. 
You ever see the shifters that are like that? That's pretty cool. All right, we have to do this. Stock brake pedal is 12.8 ounces. Super Trick Unbreakable, 7.6 ounces. It's like half the weight. I'll take it, I'll take it. All right, now let's check out the bars and grips. Got some good old Pro Tapers, and we got Pro Taper grips as well. A lot of people, they always tell me, you know, run the clamp-ons and stuff, ODIs. I do like ODIs. I've got them on the 250R, and I actually had them on the Banshee too. However, I don't know, man. My favorite all-time grip is just the traditional half waffle from Pro Taper. I don't think it's that difficult to put on and take off grips. I just, I don't know, man. They're my favorite grips. The uh, good old reliable, I guess. So these are a soft compound. I usually use a medium compound, but we're gonna try the soft compound out. And then these are ATV high bend. I haven't tried these yet. The ones that I've tried before are ATV mid. I had that on quite a few, actually. I wanted to try the high bend for this one pop off this bar pad real quick because we're actually going to be running a different bar pad. These are nice bars though. They are the platinum color. Nothing really too crazy to show. They're just bars. And now we're going to move into the ultra premium parts. Oh yeah. Check that baby out. Got an Hermosi thumb throttle. You know I love these things. I love them so much. I even put them on my dirt bike. Still feel a little weird about that, I'm not gonna lie. But we've got the factory edition, only we got this one in black, should match the build perfectly. These things are so nice, and really, they look awesome, but the specialty thing with these is the way they feel. They're just great, man. You've got an adjustable thumb throttle. So depending on how you're riding, you can adjust them the way you like. These are just awesome. And here is the post that the actual thumb portion goes onto, and you can adjust these up or down too. So not only can you have full adjustability for forward and backward for your thumb, depending on like how big your hand is, or how long, you know, some people have like long fingers, long thumbs, some people have shorter. So these are really adjustable, which makes it nice. So you can do up and down and back and forth. I do have a video, it's in um, the great, one of the Great Babe videos showing exactly how to install this thing and put it together. I will link that right in the corner. I want to stop to take a moment to thank all the companies that are helping to make Project Voodoo Banshee possible. Thank you to Rocky Mountain ATV MC, BP Racing ATV, Kenda Tire, DRW Performance, Hermosi Throttles, Rocket Run Suspension, Mod Quad, Dave Moore Racing, Bonehead Performance Coatings, AP3 Racing, Shellvest Innovations, and Wicked Metal Designs. These are all companies that I trust and most of them I use on a regular basis. All products and tools in this video will be linked in the description below. If you're interested in these products and you're looking for a way to support the channel, using these links does help me out and there's no added cost to you. If you're enjoying the video so far, please remember to hit that like button and leave a comment below and consider subscribing. And if you're looking to support the channel even further, there is the option to join. All channel members get guaranteed responses to their YouTube comments. I will also be changing the channel name to Basket Case Garage. This is a transition that will take place slowly over the next few months. All right, let's get back to the video. All right, now this is probably the most special part that we're going to go over today, and I'm the most excited to use this one. These are the SBC 720 bar clamps by Hermosi. Now, I got to feel these on Pete Hager's quad. Just the difference that these make, it's, it's incredible. I really can't wait to try these on the trail to see the difference. This is the bar pad, and these are the actual clamps. I'm going to pull these apart to kind of give you guys a better idea of just how these things work. But essentially what they are, it's a bar stabilization and really a shock absorber system just for your hands and your arms. And it's gonna help reduce fatigue big time. I've ridden precision bar clamps. I've ridden fast flex pro bars. That's another you know, uh, version of these. However, these are supposed to be superior to both. And sometimes it's not necessarily superior. It's what works best for you. So I'm gonna actually be making an entire video just on these clamps because I think they deserve it. It's one of those products that it's a specialty item. And if you don't really quite understand all that goes into these things and what they do, you really just can't have an appreciation for them. Now, when you buy one of these things, depending on the configuration that you order, this is what you're going to get. So we've got a number of things here. We have the clamps themselves. We've got the bar pad. This is actually a tool, an installation tool. We've got riser blocks, which is really cool. You can adjust the height up and down. And if you've noticed, there's two mounting holes here. 
So you can actually adjust these forward and backward too. There is some adjustability there. And then of course you got all your hardware. You've got actually aluminum bushings for your steering stem because you don't need the anti-vibe because this is going to take the place of this and be an addition. It won't just be a, a, a substitute for that. It's actually more um, resistant for, uh, for vibration. And then of course you have a sticker. You got the sticker, but you have the actual rubber inserts as well. So these are, you got two different types here. This is a softer compound. You can see how squishy this is. And then this is a more firm compound. This is for a more advanced rider. Robert Ramosi, the owner of Ramosi, has recommended that I use these yellow ones. He says for most ATVs, this is what he recommends. So this is the actual magic in the Ermosi 720 SBC bar clamps. This isn't just an ordinary rubber. I'm not 100% sure what this is made of, but it's specifically formulated to reduce arm pump. And supposedly, Robert does claim these are indestructible. basically brand new. You may have won this time, Robert Ramosi, but I will destroy these. Bear, kill it. Kill it, bear. All right, so those are pretty durable, not gonna lie, but you have a two-piece system. So you have this side of the clamp and then you have this side of the clamp. I went ahead and bolted these together because it makes it a little bit easier. But basically that rubber insert goes in between here. And I'm gonna do this without the rubber insert because it, it'll really exaggerate the effect. But you can see these basically move independent of one, of one another. So, and they also can move up and down and side to side. And that whole area there of movement is where this rubber piece will be and that's going to give you that shock absorption and reduce arm pump so it reduces all the shock but it still gives you that connected feel so then we'll insert our indestructible rubber piece and then this piece fits into the rubber as well and now just holding it in your hand it's nice and tight but when you have the bars in there there's a good bit of flex i'm going to go ahead and actually put the handlebars in here so you guys can see what it looks like Put that mounting plate under there, and that ought to give you guys an idea of what these things are gonna look like. Pretty sweet. And I'll show you guys these little riser blocks if you did wanna go higher for some reason, which I don't think we'll need to, not with the ATV high bars. But you put these little blocks in here, and then that'll raise it up even higher. Or if you have like a low bar set up, you know, that could make up for that. But that, I really like the adjustability of that. And it's not like rinky dink looking. Sometimes like you, you look at like raising, things that are, have like raising blocks and stuff, they just don't look right. But this is a pretty clean design, I like that. Go ahead and put the bar pad on too. See what this thing's gonna look like. Pretty clean, man, I like it. All right, you knew this was coming, the scale of doom. And if you don't know what the scale of doom is, are you really even following Project Voodoo Banshee? Probably not. But the scale of doom takes no prisoners. Sorry if you thought it didn't but it doesn't take any prisoners and it's going to give us the harsh realities of gravity, even if this is the strongest clamp ever created. We have the Alba, this is the takeoff. This is just a regular anti-vibe, one and one eighth inch fat bar riser clamps. So I imagine that this is going to be lighter than the Hermosi. This is just so much more complex. I mean, it would be, I'd be shocked. <laughs> if the Hermosi is lighter. But since we're doing so much weight saving stuff with this project, it'll be interesting to see. So the Alba, and these are both outfitted at exactly the same with their bushings, the bolts and everything. 1.326 pounds. And the Hermosi, whoo, 2.230. So it's almost a pound heavier, but this is one of those areas like brakes that I'm okay you know, sacrificing a little bit of the weight savings, it will be worth that extra pound of weight, in my opinion. 
since we're weighing things, I might as well show you some new parts that I got that I want to put on the scale that are freaking sweet. These are the parts that I get excited over, man. CPI exhaust. Look at those things. Did it take me 20 minutes to set them up so that they wouldn't fall over like this? Every second of that 20 minutes. Absolutely, it did. Am I happy with the results? You're damn right I am. That looks freaking sweet. I couldn't wait to get the motor together to see what these things would look like. Those are the Assassin cylinders on there right now. And I got that new mod quad head holding them together. Does that look sweet or what though? I sure hope there's enough room. <laughs> it looks like, oh man, they're gonna be right up on that. We'll see. Probably once everything is in the frame and stuff. I mean, I'm sure they'll fit. They're small bore in frames, they're made for this. And then I've got these pipe hangers right here. These are billet aluminum, just regular old pipe hangers. What's nice about these though, is the aftermarket pipes sometimes don't line up perfectly, so these are adjustable. And then the silencers are these nice kind of bullet type. It's like a really streamlined, small, and CPI pipes sound really cool too. These have a cool story behind them. A, a, subs a subscriber had these, so unfortunately CP does not make pipes anymore. I called the company directly and they're not making Banshee pipes. So sad, but I got lucky, lucky. You know, these are basically new old stock. A subscriber had them and he wasn't using them. He never used them. I think he had them for like quite a while, like years. And they were just sitting collecting dust. So he sold them to me. And then I sent them to Big Iron Cerakote. They uh, Cerakoted them, this nice matte black. And I think that's going to match the pipes or the build really, really nicely. These were not chrome or nickel before. They were, they were raw pipes. So it actually worked out really nicely for me. I wasn't kidding when I said this took like 20 minutes to get it to stay like this. This was... This was a task. <laughs> All right, here we go. We got the SLP exhaust. These are some heavy bastards right here, but the CPI pipes aren't exactly small pipes either. Let's see what we've got weight-wise for these things. The pipe is 5.104. Let's see if we can stack all this stuff on here. 8.222. And I've got one of these old dingy, junky, OEM, steel, heavy pipe hangers. Put that bastard on there too. 8.434, 8 8.434, that, that is a heavy mofo. Actually, I really don't know. <laughs> I've never weighed a Banshee exhaust before. I have an FMF that I should weigh against this also. Oh my God, we're good. All right, and now for the super premium CPI exhaust. Four point nine eight zero. That's that's lighter. The other one was what five point one. Let's see if we can get this silencer to stay on here. Got to make sure all this stuff is airborne. No no cheating. Seven point four one six. And then we've got the pipe hanger, and I've even got one of these pipe connector joints because there's one of those on the SLP. We got to be fair. 7.608. <laughs> what is that? 0 0.4, 0 0.2, it's like 0.6 pounds per side. So that's like what? 1.2 pounds we'll be saving? We're moving in the right direction, man. We're winning. All right, just for fun, I got the FMF Fatty. This is the pipe that actually came on my Banshee. These are the original pipes. I can tell, dude. These are cons these are like, these weigh like nothing. <laughs> oh, man. We're about to, this is about to slaughter the other two pipes. Oh yeah, 3.88, that's like 1.1 pounds lighter to begin with. And then this is, these are shorty mufflers. These actually sound really good. They are FMFs, they're just cut down. I think um, these are just smaller pipes overall. And then they're, the, the gauge of steel that they use, I feel like is a little bit thinner too. 6.41 and then to be fair we'll put the pipe connector on there and we'll we'll go with the heavy ass one so we can not feel quite as bad oh damn it 6.686 so it's like uh what is it's like a pound lighter so it would be a pound lighter per side if we were going to the fmf from the slp that would be pretty considerable because that was like 8.2 pounds so it'd be like three pounds difference there. That's that's pretty significant, but that's what the FMF weighs. It's quite possible that I get a little too excited over this stuff, but last pieces, I swear, and then I'm done for today. 
check this out, dude. This is literally one of the coolest pieces that's going on this machine. I wanna show you guys a close up of this thing so you can really appreciate it. It's billet aluminum and then inside, if you guys can see where the color separates, it's a steel insert for the splines so they won't strip out. Pretty nice design. This is like winning in all categories. It looks better, it's lighter, and because it's lighter, that means it's gonna perform better. I am super stoked to put this thing on here and what's really cool about this is that this ugly ass OEM one is super heavy, man. That is cast steel with a steel sprocket. It's got these locking mechanisms on here for the sprocket nuts. I mean, this thing is just ultra heavy, dude. I can't wait to see what the weight difference is on these things. This thing is like a featherweight, man. I cannot wait. I can't express how much I can't wait for that one. And then of course we've got our gas cap and then I have a billet gas cap. And I actually thought the billet gas cap would be heavy but it's really lightweight, man. So we're gonna finish up with these two billet parts and then we'll move on. Okay, so let's do the gas cap first cause that one's kind of anti-climatic. 0.322 pounds, junk. 0.212, so that's why like a 0.1 pound winning. All right, and now this giant heavy ass sprocket hub. <laughs> 3.816 pounds. Now I only have three bolts in this right now because I actually have titanium ones coming in the mail and titanium is 45% lighter than steel. So that's about half. So I only put half of these in there. Oh, here we go. 1.964. That's like two pounds. That's legitimately like half the weight. Oh, that's significant. Wow, and that's rotating mass too. That is a super win. Now, unfortunately I have to do this because this is my own creation and I need to take responsibility for my actions. I have a feeling that I'm about to get a harsh, swift kick to the balls from the harsh realities of gravity, but we're gonna weigh the Nerf bars and the heel guards against the takeoffs. I just know that this is, this is one of those times if, if, uh, if you wanna make it out alive, you might wanna leave now just uh Evacuate the building. 4.098 for the Nerf bar sections. Ooh, these things are super heavy. <laughs> 8.170. Uh, can we even fit all this stuff on here? I don't know. Oh, 11.954. Fifteen point one five two. Oh, and the nets. Fifteen point six nine zero. Oh. oh my god. Oh, dude, that hurts. Oh, and we have the uh, the posts that I welded onto the frame. We'll just say that's another pound. So we'll say it's 16.690. Oh. oh boy. Now these aren't exactly light, but these are the pro pegs that came off. 4.630, all right. 9.640, oh. okay. I don't feel that bad. It's like, what is that? Like six, six and a half pounds difference. Oh, not terrible, but if I have to, I will abandon the heel guards or something. <laughs> Not horrible though. I mean, I guess it's, it's in the right area. At least if we're going to gain weight anywhere, at least that stuff is sprung weight and it's centralized and it's got a low center of gravity. It's pretty much as low as it could be and in the center as much as it can be. So any place to gain weight, that's, that's at least the best spot. <laughs> Oh God. You know, I'm editing this video right now and I just can't bear to end it on a negative note like that in the weight loss category. So I got my new wheels for the front Kendas and we're gonna weigh them against the takeoffs because we have to have a victory here. That was just total slaughterhouse. We'll do the whole front assembly, 35.146. And I'm throwing on these damn guards too because we're not running these. So that's 36.296. And now we got the front tires. Got to be 36.296. 31.890. Five pound gain right there. 
we had to do it, man. Even though I think in the entirety of the day, I think we're just about breaking even. But I feel a lot better now. We're gonna change the game here and add one more element. I'm gonna include my own weight, not in the machine, but just for this project, because a bunch of people made comments about it. 219.5 is what I weigh right now. For people wondering, I'm just barely 5'10", just under it. So let's see how much I can cut down by the end of this project in the next couple weeks. Have I lost my mind? Yes. It's the consolidation and confinement of working by myself in the garage that drives me to do all of these things. So as far as new products go for this video, that is going to be it. There is one thing I wanna do before I let you guys go. I wanna mod this brake pedal. All right, so like I was showing you guys before, this thing is pretty nice and you can see the adjustability of it right here. Let's go ahead and pop this adjustment screw out. You can see this slot right here. There's a little groove on the bottom of this and that enables you to slide this back and forth. This is actually a pretty nice design. It's pretty slick. You can use the OEM one to measure. Really where we need this is in the minus one position, which is right about there. So I don't think that's gonna be difficult to do. Drilling the holes is easy. You know, literally all you have to do, you can use this as a template, make a punch mark and then drill and tap a hole. That's no problem. But what we do have to do is we're gonna have to make this little slotted portion go back and that shouldn't be difficult either. I can probably do that with a Dremel. And let's drag this mark back so that it's a little bit easier for us to see from up here. I think our best bet is going to be taking this little grinding wheel. It's just the right size to fit in here. And I'm just going to carefully work my way back Take that out. Super, super easy tools you can pick up at Harbor Freight. All right, this isn't coming down as quickly as I thought it would. Let's try this cutting wheel. I think this will help a little bit, be a little bit easier. wasn't too bad. That other tool definitely made it a lot easier. It only jumped out one time, but this is all going to be covered anyways. Looks like right about there is as far back as it goes now. That's a considerable amount. All right, well, this came out quite nice. I was gonna coat the end of this with a little bit of black, but actually it looks fine. This area up here, we're not, we won't be able to see once we have the pedal on there. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it in place. I did, I ended up doing the three positions just in case we ever wanna extend this out. I'm gonna be putting it in the closest one. That was about minus just over an inch right there. You can see I have these like so, if I ever do want to extend that out. Put a little bit of Loctite on this stainless steel hardware that it comes with. <clears throat> Looks good to me. I also noticed that this has the little hole here for the rubber bumper. So I'm gonna order another one of those and I'll pop that in there. And this is nice too. It has a brass fitting. So this should probably last a really long time. And since the quad's set up, you can see that's about where the OEM one would have sat or you know where this one originally was, which is a bit far out there. And that's where it'll be set up right now, which is just about where stock was. It should be good. We have to do this since we took weight off. 0.8 pounds. 0.444 pounds. So it's about half the weight. 0.4. 
So we are moving in the right direction. We're getting there, man. Not plastic-wise, but we have the OEM plastics coming on the way. I'm actually really excited to see what those look like. The only OEM plastics that I have experience with are the ones that came off of this. They were the original plastics from 1990. At least I think they were. They were the right colors for 1990, so I think they actually were the OEM plastics that legitimately came on this quad. And, of course, I've seen OEM plastics on other people's quads and stuff, but I've never actually really, like mounted them and stuff other than those ones that I took off. So it's going to be pretty exciting to see the ones that I get. I believe they were a mixture of 2001 and 2004 so that I could get all black. All the rest of the stuff is pretty much done. All the custom parts are made. The Nerf bars are ready to rock and roll. The stuff is ready to get sent out for powder coat. So that's what I'll be doing this coming Monday. Hopefully I can get a quick turnaround on the clutch cover. That's the last piece for the engine. So I can start assembling the engine. We'll get the power plant ready to rock and roll. I'm super excited to see what we can do with this thing. And otherwise, you know, there's just some small odds and ends. I got to cover up the seat and basically it's going to be assembly time and that is freaking exciting so that's going to be it for this one guys i appreciate everybody watching if you enjoyed this content and you want to see more of it please consider giving me that thumbs up button and also consider hitting the subscribe button and if you're looking to support the channel even further there is the option to join i will see you guys in the next video peace out